glare varala la light a irukku you should be able to see the see in this slide you should be able to see ha ah, this is my now pressure measurement uh here you know you have a for microscopic explanation i have given this the entire discussion i have given on a separate lecture made available in the youtube you go through it here there is a gas you would like to define pressure the uh, from molecular theory the gases are uh, the molecules in the gases are in random motion they come and hit and go back the hitting force is the force each molecule will hit at any given time a number of molecules will hit the piston this is a piston cylinder arrangement whatever is the uh, force that is applied by the number of molecules hitting is the force at the given instance okay. so the force is each force will have certain direction you take only the horizontal component of that force force can be resolved into fx fy mz you take only the x component of that that forms the force in pressure definition pressure is given by force divided by area the f is given by that the force uh, applied by the hitting molecules okay at any given moment so momentarily it will change every moment will if the force is keep on changing when you measure the pressure but the variation is very small so you take it as an average force it's a force the area is very simple the cross section area of this piston is the area because that is the only one which is moving the rest of the things are working uh, stationary so you the area here is the area in which uh, the forces are acting so this is the cross section area of this piston is the area force divided by area is pressure now how to measure pressure is the subject matter for this case this case youtube manometer uh this is actually a cross section of the pipe the pipe is going through piercing the bore so the cross section it looks like a circle some fluid is going at some pressure we are interested in measuring that pressure i connected a pipe and uh, this is the youtube manometer youtube manometer is nothing simply a youtube made up of some glass uh, or even transparent plastic inside it you will have manometric fluid manometric fluid is normally it is a uh, mercury of course there are other manometric fluids out so uh, that pressure is acting on one side of the u tube and the other side is generally uh, exposed to the atmosphere pressure okay so that you will be able to measure the gauge pressure in case you want the differential pressure that means uh, there is a pipe going from here and here you want to know what is the pressure difference take one pipe connect it to one side of the u tube take another pipe connect it to the another side of the u tube so you will get the differential pressure so write the equations for this this is the pressure which we are interested in you call this as p1 okay and here the one is missing suffix p1 is missing p1 plus rho g h rho g h is the height of the column the uh, mercury liquid column rho g g is of course uh, gravitational uh, force and h is the height that we will measure using a normal scale youtube most of you would have used in the fluid mechanics lab in one to okanda len sirichi okanda velivi kodu amala one da 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 na paakum bodhu sincere a irukirathu appuram thirumana na sirikirathu moonu tharava paathukku am i making some joke here here uh, you have h h1 is the height of the uh, mercury uh, liquid column that's h1 and for column 1 this is the formula the pressure applied by the fluid that is p1 which i have represented here as p supposed to be p1 and the remaining mercury column you take some level as the reference here from there you measure what is the column that column will be here. with the same datum measure uh, the height here that will be h2 g remain same rho 1 and rho 2 will be normally equal because same manometric fluid we will be using so rho plays uh, less role there and uh, the uh, this is here it is subject to atmospheric pressure so it is atmospheric pressure plus the column of liquid whatever the pressure that is developed by column of liquid is balanced by the pressure applied by the fluid flowing through the pipe plus the rest of the column of the pipe 
So this is the force balance, isn't it? Or pressure balance. At that moment, this is not flowing, it is balanced and the column will be able to stand stationary. Okay? So that is the uh, equation. So this equation goes. <coughs> so from this, P1 is atmospheric pressure plus uh, the rho g h2 minus rho g h1. Rho and g remains constant, you can take it out. h2 minus h1 you take and by measuring the height difference and multiplying with the rho g, adding to atmospheric pressure, you get the pressure inside the column. That is how you measure pressure in the flowing. Now, atmospheric pressure. This is the gauge pressure. Gauge pressure means measuring pressure <coughs> with respect to atmospheric pressure is gauge pressure. And uh, this is very simple in uh, construction and uh, easy to fabricate. All you need is a, a U-tube and some mercury. If you have your, of course, your scale is needed to measure H1 and H2. That is all is needed to measure the pressure. And uh, you get very accurate results. Manometric fluid, you know, you can use mercury, water, water itself you can use, but YouTube will have to be a little bigger. If it is mercury, the YouTube can be a little smaller. And the maintenance is very less, you don't have to do much thing. Uh, so of course, there are some uh, disadvantages. Uh, the tube should not be too thin, it will create a capillary, capillary uh, action. Some leveling is needed, leveling problem is there. Glass is fragile, often we break and uh, uh, mercury fluid, mercury is actually uh, going out. Also, mercury is very uh, dangerous fluid. You know, it's not uh, very very toxic in nature. So, mercury should not uh, inhale or you know, but you have to keep away from mercury. If, if the glass breaks, uh, there is a loss of uh, money. Uh, also, there is uh, health issues because of the mercury. And uh, the accuracy of the reading depends upon the G value and the temperature. What you do the measurement here, what you do in Wooty, what you do in other um, sea level will be different because it is affected by the G. Uh, electronic reading, getting electronic uh, output signals, electronic signals out of this is a bit difficult. Not impossible, a bit difficult. Yes, only skilled person can take uh, the meniscus uh, reading properly. <coughs> Otherwise, uh, somebody will take some reading because they don't know where to take the reading. <coughs> Lower meniscus, upper meniscus, all these problems one should know where to take reading properly too. Uh, there are disadvantages of using YouTube now. Used uh, in venturi meter to measure the differential pressure. Of course, uh, in that time, both YouTubes are connected to <coughs> both sides of the U-tubes are connected to the both sides upstream and downstream side of the venture meter. Leveling devices you can use as well as uh, uh, this is uh, uh, you know can be used as a primary standard for pressure machine because this equation is derived from first principles. You can use this as a standard pressure for uh, calibrating any of your pressure measuring device. So you connect this U-tube manometer, find out what is the pressure. You connect a pressure gauge, let's say Borden tube pressure gauge or any other bellows type pressure gauge that we are going to see. Whatever is the pressure that is showing, you can see this is actual true value. That is the meter value. You can correct the meter value according to this true value. Okay. So this serves as the primary standard for other pressure machine devices. That's about YouTube manometer. You might have already heard about YouTube manometer, studied a bit of that in fluid mechanics related courses. If you have any questions, you can answer. Otherwise, we can go to Borden tube. Any questions on YouTube manometer? Right. Borden tube pressure gauge. Okay, here we have a, a Borden tube pressure gauge. Um, <coughs> of course, that is connected to electrical output. I just brought it because how to connect a Borden tube with uh, an LVDT. Even without connecting LVDT, a gauge will be like this. What you see there is all Borden tube pressure gauges. You see there, <coughs> that gauge, this gauge are all Borden tube pressure gauges. All pressure gauges. If you go to industry, about 70 to 75 percent of the pressure measuring device you find in the industry are all pressure, Borden tube pressure gauges. Very widely used gauges in the industry. Any industry, mechanical industry you walk into, if you see a pressure gauge, most likely that will be a uh, Borden tube pressure gauge. So, uh, here the pipe through which the inlet pressure is connected. Uh, this goes, this, there is a tube here up to this. This tube is called Borden tube. That tube is called Borden tube. That is made up of an elastic uh, material. Uh, it's of course made up of uh, metal. It's not uh, mm, 
leather or something. It's a metal or it may be um, due to an alloy, but this is a metallic structure. Initial cross section will be elliptical in nature. Initial cross section is elliptical in shape. And that is connected to a linkage. This is a linkage. The linkage is connected to a sector. This Y shaped item, this is a sector. The black dot is hinged. Hinge. That means when pressure is applied, this elliptical cross section will become circular in shape. Elliptical cross section will become circular in shape. And there is an unbinding action. <coughs> the uh, the pressure uh, C type Bowden tube is like that initially. When pressure is applied, proportional to the pressure, it tries to unwind. What is in the palm of C, anyway, this side it is fixed So it will try to unwind. It will try to unwind. Okay. It will go outward. You can uh, <coughs> visualize this by visualizing a um, cycle a tube when you uh, pump air into it. What will happen? Earlier, uh, when the air is not at all there, uh, the cycle tube may be in a zigzag fashion. You start applying um, pressure and the air into the cycle tube, the cycle tube will uh, try to become straightened. Because it cannot become straight line, it tries to become perfect circle. It cannot become uh, straight line, it becomes circle. Or you take a balloon, you might have seen uh, in tea nether or in other places in the very festive season, a thin balloon will be there. When the, uh, uh, the balloon is no, uh, not inflated, you will see that they are all rolled and then it is here as a roller. The moment you apply force, uh, the pressure into that uh, balloon, the air is being blown into it. It unwinds and then goes as a straight line. You see, it unwinds and becomes a straight line. Same thing happens here. The, the pressure is applied to the C shaped modern tube, and that modern tube will try to straighten, try to straighten when the pressure is more. Okay? So that's the basic action that takes place. And that unwinding action pulls this sector towards your right. Your right, right hand side. Since it is hinged, the, this sector will rotate like this because it is hinged here. This is being pulled, so this will rotate like this. This is actually a pinion. I have drawn it as a circle, like a, it is looking like a ball. It's not a ball. That is my drawing mistake. Because I, for my book, I have drawn because I didn't have much time. Simply, I have drawn like this. To be precise, this is a gear. Small gear is called a pinion, so that's why it is pinion. This this is a pinion. This is a sector. Same tooth is uh, same type of teeth are available here. So uh, here also it is a toothed uh, item. Uh, it's a pinion. As it moves towards this direction, this will move towards. When it moves towards this, this move, rotates. Is that ever understood? So your uh, the gauge will show really proportional to the applied pressure. So you have pressure applied. This C shape is trying to unwind. It tries to pull. The pulling action rotates in this direction. Uh, and uh, when this moves like this, the uh, pinion rotates in clockwise direction. Here it will be zero. As proportional to the pressure, the pointer moves and stands. When you remove the pressure, this comes back. This is coming back. Pointer also comes back. During that, we don't want more oscillation. No. Yeah. Have you ever checked the pressure in the uh, automobile wheels or uh, tires? When he checks pressure, you will see the needle will come and then a big shake will be there. Okay. To avoid that shake, a light spring is given. The time <coughs> spring here to avoid the needle movement. Okay. If you put high stiffness in the spring, then that, that, that will add to the loading effect. It will take some amount of pressure uh, to for its, uh, you know, you have to overcome the spring force for the needle movement. That will add loading effect. We don't want to add much loading effect. At the same time, we want unnecessary oscillation while taking the needle. So put a very, very, very light uh, spiral spring. Uh, spring there so that you know, the movement oscillations are stopped and you get a uh, 
more or less smooth pressure gauge reading proportional to the pressure in flow rate. The gauge is calibrated either in terms of kg per centimeter square or bar or whatever Newton per meter square, whatever is the pressure. A lot of many commercial uh, gauges will come with uh, uh, two at least two uh, units, either bar and uh, uh, Newton per meter centimeter square, Newton per meter square, and things like that. One will be in uh, red color, the other may be in black color. There will be some color coding depending upon the range and the type of unit that you use. Accordingly, you read any one from the uh, gauge diagram. This is border type pressure gauge. The materials up to 7 Newton per mm square, you use brown, faster. As a, as a C, C type uh, border tube material, uh, is faster. Anything above 7 Newton per mm square, you use alloy steel or uh, stainless steel, they are all, you can go up to any pressure. Today we have no limitation for this. Normally for most engineering applications, this itself is good enough. So for most of the high pressure applications, you can use Very, very low pressure applications, below atmospheric pressure, you cannot use very, very much, not very sensitive. For high pressure, this is the ideal candidate to use, so border tube. Normally these tubes are uh, machine drawn, wire drawn and kind of, the drawing is an operation, drawn and machined and heat treated, coated, <coughs> if cor corrosion will be there, you do a coating to avoid the corrosion. And border tubes are made. Very, very low cost, <coughs> 250 rupees, 300 rupees also, so low, low quality uh, border tubes are available in the market. I bought one uh, compressor to inflate my tires with border tube pressure gauge. With the compressor, it is only 350 rupees. So such low cost it is. So about 500 rupees, 600 rupees, you will get very very good uh, uh, type of border tube. Of course, when pressure range is high, you want a bigger border tube. The cost will be slightly high. But unlike other transducers, the cost of the pressure gauge is very very low. Simple in construction, gives better results. Uh, it can be modified to give electrical output. Just to show you this, I brought this uh, to your table. Um, if you are able to observe, of course, what you see, uh, what you see here is also a uh, border tube only. So inside that there is a pressure tube. What you see here is also a border tube only. A C type border tube in the cut section, cut to open section, you will be able to see transparently for students to see this. Here. You see the C tube. The outer link, outermost link, is connected to the LVDT uh, uh, push rod. LVDT push rod. So LVDT is connected to LVDT is connected to this directly to this. When it moves, when it unwinds, it moves the uh, push rod of LVDT. When LVDT moves, you get electricity. <coughs> So electrical output can be directly calibrated to measure the pressure readings directly. So this can be modified to view an electrical output. Calibration is very easy, capable of measuring gauge pressure, absolute pressure, differential pressure, anything that you will be able to do. Uh, the problem is of course like thermometers, it is a bit slow. Um, hysteresis is more, hysteresis means what? You apply pressure, uh, the circular section become um, the elliptical section becomes circular in nature and then the unwinding action takes place. You remove the pressure, immediately it may not come to zero, it will take some time. There will be some residual stress on the material because there is a change in the shape of the material itself because of the pressure. So that takes some time. There will be residual stress that leads to, residual stress leads to hysteresis. We have discussed what is meant by hysteresis. So hysteresis is more. And since due to shock and vibration, uh, and uh, readability will be poor in vibratory environment. Already it will have some shaky reading. In uh, vibratory environment, you take this gauge and take reading, it will be still more difficult to uh, take the reading. Closed end of the displacement is small, and greater amplification is needed. Here the displacement is very small. Normally an amplification is needed. I have not shown any gears here. Directly uh, sector I have connected to the pinion. You take, you go through that, there will be set of gears for amplification of the gear. There will be a small uh, rotation of the, there will be small displacement available. That small displacement through set of gears it gets amplified and finally you get the uh, pressure gauge reading there. So there will be set of gears 
uh, gear train uh, through which it passes through to show you the rule. Okay. This is the working principle of board and tube machine. Very widely used in industries. Any questions? Clear? Diaphragm type pressure gauge. Uh, here you have a container. In the middle you have a diaphragm. You know what is meant by diaphragm? A thin metallic sheet. An additional characteristic should be it should be elastic. Otherwise, it is a thin sheet. Here you here you attach a pressure to be measured, either here or here, anywhere you can find it, to measure the pressure of that particular uh, container or uh, pressure of the flowing fluid that comes here. Apply the pressure here. If you, if you connect it to point 3, through inlet 3, this pushes down, the plunger moves down, the sector moves down, this is rotating in the clockwise direction, this gear will rotate in anti-clockwise direction, this will be 0 as it moves down, 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, that pressure will be there, you will be able to take that. So that is determined by the deflection of this diaphragm. If high pressure, high deflection, low pressure, low deflection of the diaphragm. And coming back to its original position, stability of that, no oscillation, is controlled by this line spring, number 7, is controlled by that line spring. This is for normal pressure measurement. For differential pressure measurement, one pressure you connect it at inlet 3, other pressure input 2 you connect it to inlet 6. So one fluid will be acting here, need not be different fluid, can be same fluid itself. One pressure will be acting here, another pressure will be acting here. So there will be a force uh, uh, unbalance. The resultant force will act either in upward direction or downward direction. If both forces are equal, naturally the reading will be zero. If there is an unequal force, whichever the, uh, the direction is a high pressure, let's say upward pressure is more, so upward force will be more. So the diaphragm will deflect in the upward direction. So that will move the plunger upward in corresponding reading will. Suppose here the pressure is more, here the pressure is less, while measuring differential pressure, the diaphragm will deflect in the bottom, accordingly the plunger will come down, the needle will move accordingly, you will be able to measure what is the pressure difference between two inputs that we have. This is called differential pressure measurement using elastic diaphragm pressure. So there are two types possible. So clear? <coughs> yes? <coughs> this is an explanation of different types of material used. Very, very similar. The last item of the day is bellows type pressure gauge. What is bellows type pressure gauge? You know what is meant by bellows? What is meant by bellows? In the auto, you have a horn, blower, pam, 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 something. That's, that's a one type of bellow. Or the toys will be there. Normally, <coughs> dog toys will be there. You press like this, the dog will jump and bark. You know, that kind of toys. You, you apply pressure using a bellow. You know, they are all bellows. This is a bellow. That's made up of elastic membrane, elastic material. Okay. Now, the here, uh, since I have drawn, uh, I have to draw a bigger structure. I have enlarged this portion and then shown here. Here. Between the uh, bellows and the plunger, you see there is a small hole that is open to atmosphere. That is open to atmosphere. So what you do, that's very important. If you are completely closed, uh, the scene is different. It don't work properly. You cannot measure uh, atmospheric uh, the pressure of the uh, pressure of the medium with respect to atmospheric pressure. You cannot measure. Always pressure measurement is made with respect to atmospheric pressure that with respect to atmospheric pressure is ensured by this. In your drawing, when you draw in the examination, if this is not shown, probably you will get zero marks. All explanations are correct, the drawing is correct, except this one place, if there is, it is not open to atmosphere, the entire explanation will go wrong, you will get zero marks. So pay attention carefully. So this is bellow, and there is a plunger, which is spring-loaded. You see across lines, those cross lines, 
which I have pointed with number 6 is a spring and the, the bar that is going inside, the rod that is going inside that, that normally is called plunger that is connected to this arrangement. This arrangement I have explained already for border shape that remains same. So here it, outside the rectangle or square type that what you see is a container through which this is the inlet pressure that you send. The inlet pressure that the pressure to be measured is connected here. <coughs> Marie Shoran, the pressure to be measured is applied here. That pressure compresses the bellow because it is connected to atmospheric pressure. And the applied pressure is more than uh, more than atmospheric pressure. Okay. If it is equal to atmospheric pressure, so no compression will take place. If it is above atmospheric pressure, the, uh, the pressure will push the uh, bellows uh, proportionally. If it is 2 bar, then it will push little. If it is 3 bar, still further. 4 bar, still further. Proportional to amount of compression in the bellows, the plunger will move up. This is fixed and also hinged. This will move up. That means it will rotate. Accordingly, there will be a pointer movement proportional to that. You put a dial gauge and calibrate it properly, you will be able to make the pressure back. This is the pressure measurement using bellows type pressure pressure. The modified version of that is used to for measuring differential pressure. You have two bellows. See one bellow here, another bellow here. Here there is no open to atmosphere. Here also you can leave uh, this unconnected and here alone you uh, connect the pressure to be measured, you can measure the pressure. This is a different arrangement. So this is bellows type pressure gauge for measuring differential pressure. What is meant by differential pressure? I have two pressures, one coming from upstream of venturi tube, one coming from downstream of venturi tube. I want to know what is the pressure difference. I don't want to know exact pressure. I want to know what is the pressure difference. Like delta R, it is delta P I am interested in. I am not interested in pressure. I am interested in delta P. Okay. So, the pressure 1 is connected here, pressure 2 is connected here. This is connected, this is hinged in two places. <coughs> this is hinged here. The main bar is hinged in this place. So if this is high pressure, it will go down. This is low pressure, it will go up. So this rod will move up. This is low pressure, this is high pressure, the rod will rotate like this. So this is hinged, so it will go. Accordingly, this motion is transferred here through the sector and pinion and the dial gauge shows you. What you get there is directly the differential pressure, not the absolute pressure. Very, very important. It is not the, uh, the absolute pressure. It is not one bar. It means the pressure here is one bar. No, the difference between P1 and P2 is one bar. If the reading is one bar. So what you get is the 